Scorpio, it's me Stormy and here is your annual horoscope for the year of 2020. Now keep in mind that we're going to do an overview of 2020 so you know the big things that are coming, the big areas of impact for you, but I will also break them down every month and every week as to what's happening up there in that cosmic beautiful sky. So I look forward to jumping in with you this year and I can tell you it's kind of an interesting year for you I think because there's so much lit up in your third house, the house of intellect things and pursuits now has both Saturn, Pluto, and also Jupiter in there as well. So this is a very busy area for you. Plus, astrologically this year, we've got Saturn and Pluto coming together at the beginning of the year. We've got Jupiter and Pluto coming together three different times throughout the year, which these are, we are here for these. These are such helpers to us. They're focused energy. We get things done. At the end of the year, we've got the great conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter coming together to bring energy, um, bring some serenity to some of the chaos we've been going on. And they're also the energies that are going to rule the next age for us. So they're called the age rulers. So it's a very busy year astrologically. We've got six eclipses happening this year and every planet that can will retrograde. So lots and lots and lots going on, Scorpio. So let's jump in here, okay? Right at the beginning of the year, we're going to have this lunar eclipse at 20 degrees of Cancer. Now, this is going to light up your ninth house space. Now, the ninth house space is, of course, across the street from the third house in the first place. We continue this dance that we had in 2019. We carry it into 2020, looking at the third and the ninth houses. This is our thinking houses, the way I process information, the way I communicate, but also we take it across the street to the ninth house, and this is my actual set of beliefs, the information I have. Do I have enough information to form new beliefs, right? Those are the things that are happening at this particular lunar eclipse, which says we need to end something, we need to acknowledge something, we need to make an adjustment, and that adjustment's gonna carry us for about six months. So in the ninth house, one of the things I think of is for my college students or anybody studying in higher education, you could be making some kind of adjustments to your program in some way, shape, or form. Um, Maybe you need to make an acknowledgement that you need to correct your track in some way, shape, or form. This is also a good energy where it's like you're trying to regenerate here. So there could be some kind of detox happening, especially because on the 12th, we've got Saturn and Pluto coming together in their conjunction at 22 degrees of Capricorn. But this Scorpio will light up the third house. Pluto is one of your ruling planets, so putting an eclipse this close to something that your ruling planet is doing, which is also a pretty big astrological event as well, this gives me the idea that there is detox to your thinking coming up. There is detox to something that you're learning or something that you're teaching, but there are certainly going to be some adjustments. With Saturn and Pluto together here in this third house, this is a slow but powerful evolutionary process that's coming on. And what the process does is it destroys old foundations, old things that were there because Pluto says, okay, Scorpio, we need to die off. And you know that. You know that that's a home ruling domicile energy for you. But Saturn says, okay, while you've died off, now I'm going to raise you up. I'm going to take you to the next level. It really says to you, Scorpio, we got to grow up in this area. So we've got to tear some things down so that we can build some new structures here. So new thinking new beliefs. This is a time in the world where many people, our societies are getting different. They're questioning beliefs that they've had for a very long time. And this could be a time, Scorpio, where this is happening for you. Saturn and Pluto, as they come together, can create a feeling of loss or hardship or like you're trying to push through something. But as soon as you do it, whatever that loss, whatever that hardship was in this particular area, behind that, you get the advancement of the thinking. That hardship feels like the tearing down of the old structure. So what I can tell you is, as you listen right now, be prepared. Be prepared to be as open-minded as you can as these energies are here so that you can make adjustments. Now, to add a little bit more flame to this fire, we've got Uranus continuing through the energy of Taurus, which is going to continue to bring changeable things in your relationships. It creates a little bit of instability. So even in the relationships into your life, it could not be that you're over there just trying to change your mind and your thinking and get these new belief structures, Scorpio, you could have new relationships or existing relationships that are changing, that are putting you in a position to be challenged and challenging your thinking and your believing and your growth, right? So you can definitely look and plan 
plan for those things to be happening. Now, one thing I do want to just throw out there in general, because Jupiter acts as your financial planet in the general horoscope for Scorpio, because he's going to be traveling with Pluto, this is actually very good for you for the year. And in the energy of Capricorn in general, it means that this year is a financially conservative year for you. It is no get rich quick money coming to the table for you. This is about building long term wealth. And because Pluto is your ruling energy, it could be that you're promoting yourself, you're putting yourself out there. Opportunities could honestly be coming to your table, but you're making the decision to grab them and to take them on, even though this energy primarily lights up your third house, because Jupiter acts in the general as a financial planet for you, this gives us a clue that this is actually very good for you this year. So kind of keep that in mind as well. Now, Mercury is going to retrograde three different times during the year, February, June, and October, and I will cover those in the monthly videos. But March 22nd, we need to make note of, Saturn is going to take this step into the energy of Aquarius, which will light up your fourth house space. But this is just a visit. This is just a visit. He is not here to stay, not until we get to the end of the year. So from March to July, you can watch how Saturn's working in this fourth house area for you. And the fourth house area, especially with Uranus being in Taurus in these relationships, it gives me this idea that Saturn is trying to level up your home area. It's trying to level up your emotional security. And the first thing that happens when we're trying to level that security, level our psychological foundation, make changes to our physical foundations in our homes, is the first thing that happens is it kind of feels like pressure or it feels like you're taking on more responsibilities or obligations. Of course, in the fourth house, this could be something happening with family as well. You know, are you getting a preview of maybe a parent moving closer to you or needing more of your help in some way, shape, or form? Are your obligations at home changing? Is this the energy where you just need a new freaking furnace, right? This could definitely be things that are coming to your table, but ultimately, you're going to start to take more responsibility here. So make note of it from March to July and see the changes that are happening. And it could be that you're updating your technology as well. This is the energy of Aquarius. Maybe you need some friends. Do you need some new friends or some new connections at a social level? This could be it as well. Because... Um, so just make note of that. We're going to see that energy move in again in December, and it will be there until 2023. Now, May 13th through June 25th, we've got Venus retrograde in the energy of Gemini. Now, this is our first little peak at your second and eighth houses, your money axes, getting busy as we move into 2020. We've been doing the Cancer Capricorn dance. We're going to move to the Gemini Sag dance here after not too, too long. So let's watch these energies begin to work here in May. So we've got Venus retrograding through the energy of Gemini. So we already know communication is on the table. Networking, information is something that we're going to review. This is in the eighth house. So this could be something connected to money that you don't make yourself, but you get to receive. So in any place you have joint connections, this could be a partner's money. Maybe you're having to reevaluate what's happening there or have a conversation about how you're spending money. Maybe they're wanting to change their job with a financial institution, with insurance or something like that. This could be an energy where you're put in position to need to relook over this information because this is the eighth house. And then just on June 5th, we're going to have a lunar eclipse in Sagittarius at 15 degrees because that will light up your second house. This is a season here that is encompassing the need for you to relook at your money. It's a excellent time, especially with Jupiter with Pluto, for you to make any kind of financial revisions that need to happen. Maybe you need to make plans. Maybe you need to relook at where you'd like to invest in your securities or things like that. But this is the season for getting your money together. That lunar eclipse in Sagittarius, I think, could also show you where you need more advanced knowledge of your money. Where could you be expanding that money or putting it into a position where it's making money? You're working smart harder, not harder. That could definitely be a theme that represents itself, but we'll see that again as we move into December, okay? 
June 21st, we've got a solar eclipse at zero degrees of Cancer. Again, this puts us in a position up in the ninth house. So for my students, you could be restarting something that you've adjusted or you're starting fresh on something that's had an adjustment. But July 5th, we've got a lunar eclipse at 13 degrees of Capricorn. So again, in this third house. Now, this is the last time we're gonna do this dance for right now on this Cancer Capricorn axis. So your thinking houses, how has your thinking been adjusted? How have your information, your faith, your belief? Have you gathered more information that has allowed your faith and your beliefs to teach? Are you ready to expand? Is this the point in the year where you've made adjustments to information that you're teaching or that you're learning? And so there's an expansion that's available for you here in some way, shape, or form. This could bring something legal to the table for sure. And if it does, I think at this particular point in June, if it does, it is likely connected to something having to do with maybe family or a sibling or something like that. So you can keep that just as note, but it could certainly bring a disruption in that arena for sure. September 9th through November 13th, Mars is going to retrograde through your sixth house. Now, Mars is going to retrograde in the energy of Aries. So he's not entirely uncomfortable during this retrograde because this is the planet that he rules, or this is the sign that he rules, as well as being a ruling energy to you, right? So you're certainly going to have some adjustments that involve that Scorpio energy, but also across the street in your brother's house, it's going to be in Aries energy, so your sixth house. So one of the things I immediately think of is do you need to go back over a health situation, right? Do you need to go over? Because Mars is your action, your energy, your movement, your desires, right? But a lot of movement. Are you taking care of yourself? Just flat out, are you taking care of this physical body? What do you have going on over here? Do you need to make some adjustments to how you're using your energy? Because Mars is a lot about how am I using my energy? Where am I putting my fight at, my hustle at? Is this an arena that needs your attention? Now, the sixth house as well could be day-to-day -day routines, you know? Like, do you have a routine that is soul-sucking, right? Like, is it making you tired? And this may show you where you need to make an adjustment there. In your work routine, like, is your calendar weird? Or does your calendar need some adjusting? What do you want this area of your life to look like? Because you'll be more apt to make adjustments to how you're physically in action in this sixth house area if your desire for it is um, different or is big enough for your actions to actually follow. Now, the one other thing I think of here in the sixth house is if you do work independently in some way, shape, or form, an opportunity for work, maybe even past work, or you have past work that you haven't put out there before, and this is your season to be putting those things out there so that the opportunities for financial abundance from them can come to you. But certainly with this Mars retrograde, you're re-looking at how you impact your daily routines for sure. Now, one of the things we do suggest during a Mars retrograde is if you can avoid scheduling any elective surgical procedures, that's a good idea. Mars is the energy and so is Aries the energy of war and of cutting and things like that. So your surgeon and the actual act of cutting during your surgery get wrapped up in this retrograde. So if you can avoid it, just do. And if you can't, you move forward to the best of your ability. Okay? November 30th, we've got a lunar eclipse happening in the end of Gemini. So this is the energy again lighting up your eighth house so adjustments again could be made to insurance any kind of partnership money things like that it's a great time to recheck and see okay so a few months ago when we did an adjustment to the budget does it look like what I need it to look like in a collaboration or something like that maybe you're going back over it in some way shape or form and adjusting to get it kicked back onto the right alignment and on the right path, but it's ultimately a phenomenal energy for bringing together something intimately. It's a lovely energy as well for astrology, healing, psychology, any of those things. Follow that up with a solar eclipse happening in Sagittarius, um, 23 degrees of Sagittarius on December 14th. So this is gonna bring fresh new beginnings that likely come out of something that you have adjusted during that Venus retrograde, right? So you could have a fresh start happening here. You're planting these seeds of intention. I think this is just a great energy for saving money as well. So you can look for some financial abundance to come at this time, especially if you've been prepared. This is a year of be prepared and be patient because there's lots of retrograde. So if you've done that, you can see some benefit here at this time. Now, December 17th. 
Saturn is going to move for the long haul into the energy of Aquarius. So now you'll have this fourth house work that is going until 2023. Saturn is leveling you up here. He literally says, Scorpio, we got to grow up. We got to get some new ideas and actions in this area, but it's not malefic. It is about taking you to the next level, right? Do you have somebody moving out of your house? Do you have someone moving in your house? Are you ready for to take on a house, right? Is this a situation where you're... Um, any of your home needs, your domestic needs, your family needs, like I said, a parent could need your attention or they could be moving in with you. Jupiter, just a day, a few days later on, on the 20th, is going to move into this area as well. Your house could be expanding in some way, shape, or form, and it's getting pretty serious, right? The energy's getting pretty heavy here. It could be too. You found out that, hey, I'm living in this house and it's fine, but it's actually starting to feel a little bit too small or too big for where I'm at in my life, and you could be making those adjustments at this time. Now, on the 21st, Jupiter and Saturn come together, and these are what we call the, the rulers of the age as we move towards that age of Aquarius. So these two coming together, first of all, they are globally over our things like our economics our political things, our religious beliefs, law and order. This is law and structure come together with wisdom. So ultimately, in a very global way, as we get to the end of 2020, we should see some serenity coming to some of the issues in these arenas that have had a lot of chaos around them. And in the energy of Aquarius, it's about connecting, it's about unifying, it's about organizations, but it's also a lot about independence. So in this particular arena of life for you, I am wondering where this is going to bring, um, be your turning point towards maybe doing something in your housing area or your emotional security, your emotional foundation, like you're finding grounding in it in a much different way. Maybe that does involve technology. You're getting back together with friends. You're connecting with people from your past and that's giving you a sense of belonging. This could even be along the lines of your ancestry. Truly, if something happens with a parent this year or a family member or somebody you consider family and you're needing to take care of them or be more responsible for them, you know, even if you've got kids going to college, this is a turning point for you for sure. One of the other things I would ask you to do is think back, Scorpio, to the years between 2012 and 2015 when Uranus and your ruling planet Pluto were doing a lot of dancing together. Globally, our society started to get a little bit different, which made space for you to have an opportunity. What was changing for you? What opened up for you? What like became a new reality for you, but you weren't ready to step into it yet? This is the turning point for that. You find your place in society. You find your place in the rhythm of your own life and in that natural flow. But this time you are ready for it and you're ready to take advantage and action on these areas as well. Now, throughout the year, um, we've got April 4th, June 30th and November 12th, where Jupiter and Pluto will come together in conjunction, and these will light up workings and happenings of your third house. But this is like a supercharged energy for you. It's extra focused. You can really expand. You can really do a lot of development in these particular areas. So as they come together, they are a positive indicator of things. So take advantage on these days to drive something forward. Allow there to be growth here. This is your third house. Is your thinking really changing as you're learning, you're teaching, your communication. Did you write that freaking book? Take advantage of these energies to be financially savvy, to be wisdom savvy with what you're doing in this third house area because this can lead to a lot of advancement that of course impacts these other areas as we travel throughout 2020 and come to your turning point at the end of the year. I think it's going to be a good year. We've got some good things on the table, but I will tell you again, be patient, be ready, and hustle this year because this is the year where if you do those things, you're almost just like set and ready to go and then it's just life on life's terms, okay? All right, Scorpio, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I look forward to traveling with you every month and every week of 2020. So I will see you back here in the next video. Love you guys. Bye.